on each side of the stage. And welcome, this is Eddie Gallagher, bringing you our magical moon down. For the next five hours, we'll roll back a few years, and I hope that one song or two might bring to mind to you a special time, a place, and of course a girl. So sit back, relax, and listen to the moon dial, the program that's better with your shoes off. Ah, I keep my shoes on. Keep my boots on. <laughs> good evening, good afternoon, welcome to the uh, the fourth of fourth of February, nineteen um, twenty three, edition of like <laughs> two thousand eleven edition of um, edition of uh, Dave's uh, Dave TV thing. I'm, I'm just studying, doing some studying here. Interesting little book here. Um, Okie dokie. Wanted to point out this morning a uh, nice little nice little piece here in the Washington Post on uh, the growth in Northern Virginia. I don't know if you can see this. You probably can't see it, but if you look here on page A19, they spell the town of McLean, which is M C capital L E A N. They spell it as McLean, capital M C capital C L E A N. Now come on, Washington Post, that's just dumb. M C capital C L E A N. Ugh. Here's what I don't like about the post. Okay, good. I like the sports section, but look, today's sports section. The whole third of the page is this just Super Bowl graphic. There's nothing here. Look at yesterday's sports section. Look at the picture. The picture takes up most of the page. A big. I mean, it's not a bad picture. Do they really? Are they really that desperate to fill space in this paper? With, giant, with these giant pictures. I mean, they don't have enough copy. It just screams, we don't have enough copy to fill the paper. I don't know, man. Something's wrong with the post. This is some cool... This is some... This is Moondial Matinee. Let me turn it up a little. I think you can hear it. I'm getting static electric shocks on everything I touch. Moondial Matinee. Recreated with Eddie Gallagher, the great Eddie Gallagher, 7 August 1977 at Wash FM. He played the music of the 40s and 50s, and it's got comments by Eddie on here. This disc was sent to me by Larry. Larry. I honestly don't remember which Larry I know sent this to me. If you're the Larry, if you're the Larry out there that sent this to me, thank you so much. I've got a ton, I mean a ton of memorabilia sitting there in the in the archive over there, and uh, one of these days I'm going to have to get through it. Um, some more memorabilia today. This is the Washington Post from 19... Let's listen to Eddie. And nevertheless, your favorite star always wins every time the moon dial spins. And now the moon dial stops for a visit with the legendary Glenn Miller. Washington Post, 1984. This is actually an original copy of it. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo, woo -hoo. Look at those ads. <laughs> and we can see what the headlines. This was Jacqueline Trescott. She used to pen the radio column. You know, the Washington Post actually used to have a radio column. And this was from January 1984. The ratings. WKYS. Top the ratings. WGAY, which is where Eddie worked for a number of years, uh, they were second. That was back when it was an easy listening station. WMAL was third. Back when WMAL played music, you know they had uh, they had hard to leave on the morning. They had kind of a light music format for most of the day. Tom Gager did afternoons. No Rush Limbaugh. That was way before Rush. Uh, WR2X back when they were Q107 was fourth. HUR fifth. WAVA. Six. Now, I'm not sure what WAVA. Okay, WAVA, which had just made the dramatic change from album rock to top 40, was sixth place. That's back when they were owned, oh, I believe, by Doubleday or Emmis or one of those companies. No, nobody will really get that one ever heard him play. Glenn Miller and his famous theme song, Moonlight Serenade. Uh, and now here's one of the classic Glenn Miller tunes. And, uh, okay, W Light was seventh, WLTT 94.7. Uh, WRCAM was eighth. I believe they were a talk station back then. 
Uh, ninth was Wash, which was Adult Contemporary, and tenth was WTOP. Tenth! WTOP, which was all news back then, was tenth. WTOP, of course, is always at the top of the, uh, of the ratings, bat ratings uh, thing this time. Harden and Weaver were at the top of the ratings in the mornings with Donnie Simpson's, Donnie Simpson's second on WKYS. Wow. So anyhow, the Grease Man was still at W. Uh, the Grease Man was doing WWDC. WWDC's ratings were four. They were 14th place. Wow. I'm looking here. I don't see HFS on the list, but I think HF. Yeah, that's after HFS had already left 102.3 and was out of Annapolis. So I don't know if they were even on the ratings back then. But anyhow, yeah, we had Gary D over at. Uh, at uh, 1059 Kicks Country and Jim London his predecessor and uh, now is at WMCQ and he got he actually beat the Grease Man so what the he beat the Grease Man but it's interesting to look at the radio news from 1984 uh, WXTR the only area's only all oldie station went on the air last weekend for nearly 24, went off the air to install a new transmitter. And WMAL will be running the Super Bowl, or replaying, oh, they're replaying last year's Super Bowl between the Redskins and the Miami Dolphins Sunday at 105. Yeah, remember, remember when the Redskins were in the Super Bowl? Remember when the Redskins were a good team? Speaking of the Redskins, folks, um, wanted to point out a really good, uh, a really good rant, really good piece of commentary today by uh, Brett Haber here at W at WUSA. He's the top. Uh, he's the top um, sports dude over at Channel Nine. Really, really good. Um, a really good uh, commentary here. Let me turn down the little uh, Chattanooga choo there, because it's driving me to distraction. He penned a really good thing, anyhow, on Dan Snyder uh, and his suit against the Washington City paper for $2 million because Dan didn't like an article that ran in November. And I'm quoting here from Brett. Quote, in the past, Dan Snyder has been brash, impatient, and even capricious in his management of the Redskins, but that was his prerogative. After all, it's his team. But the lawsuit against the Washington City paper goes beyond that. It is a classic case of bullying and a man stepping on the First Amendment rights of a legitimate news organization because he doesn't like what they say about it. Those who have reviewed Snyder's case find his claims of slander to be little more than trumped-up charges over a farcically written opinion piece. This isn't Russia. You don't get to stifle what the media says just because it paints you in a negative light. But even more repugnant is the fact that Snyder has threatened to use his wallet to intimidate the newspaper into backing down. Right, if you want to read that, go to WUSA.com, and they have it featured on their front page there. It is brilliant. Uh, hats off. You know, Brett Haber... Uh, we've covered Brett, and we've, we've done a little, we've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with him a little bit over the years. He used to be a, remember him, used to be the morning man over there at Z104, and uh, there were some dust-ups we had. Uh, some people would post on the mailbag. He does apparently have a little bit of a temper, <laughs> and there were a few times where he raged and did a few things, and we were got got written up on the in the mailbag at DCRGV, and he didn't like that, and but he's, I think he's a nice guy. He, he tends to be a little bit of a hothead. But, it, you know, I think Channel 9's news is getting better. They've got some good people over there. They've got a good weather department. They're getting a better sports department. I like Brett. Uh, JC's always good. At, you know, how, how much more is JC going to do? You know, she's down to the new news now. There's rumors galore that she's going to be hanging up her microphone one of these days. But she's still there. They've got some nice people there. Although I do think that, uh, I think Channel 4 is still the best news team in town. And 5, you know, 5's Five is good. It's not my personal choice because it is a little too much of a scare cast, but it, they do run a good newscast. Uh, seven, I think, you know, they need to start working on developing some new talent. The, the, you know, having the great old guys like Gordon and Maureen there are great, but, you know, they really need to start working on getting some, some of their own identity there and not taking them from other stations. But anyhow, you know, I could get into a whole rant on Arbit all Britain, and I will do that someday. This is nice. This is real nice. Eddie Gallagher. He worked at a his last, one of his last radio gigs was at the old 1260, the old um, 
believe it was WGAYAM back when it had a, a big band format. And uh, he worked with Buddy Riser there, and he worked did the morning show with Bob Duckman. And then eventually that station, they pulled the plug on it, and I don't know, it's had a variety of formats over the years, and Clear Channel eventually sold it. But uh, and he passed away a couple years back, and he is one of the true greats of the uh, of the Washington Radio Battle. One quick correction I wanted to make. Yesterday, when I was talking about Bob McBride passing away at Channel 4, we ran a picture of him that I picked off of VCR TV Plus and showed it to you with a little camera. And uh, one of the pictures was of him. One of them wasn't. But if you go to the front page of DCRTV.com today, you can actually see the picture that really was of him. It was kind of a fuzzy picture in my eyesight, you know. Is, um, I'm going. I'm losing my vision. I'm losing my vision. No, I'm not. Anyhow. What happened? All right, we're about the 10 minute mark. You have a good one and have a great weekend. And uh, don't forget to stay.